The second criterion is grammatical range and accuracy. This is worth 25% of your band score. Let's compare two candidates. One of them has achieved band 5 and the other has achieved band 8. The candidate with band 5 produces basic sentence forms with reasonable accuracy. So the idea is this candidate can easily use only the present simple. It's very difficult for him to use the future simple, the past simple, the present perfect, the present perfect continues, the active voice, the passive voice. Why not? Because he doesn't know how to use this grammar. Next, this candidate uses a limited range of more complex structures. But these usually contain errors and may cause some comprehension problems. So the idea is, even though this candidate tries to use complex sentences, he tends to make a lot of mistakes. And therefore, it's very difficult for the examiner to understand this candidate. By contrast, the candidate with band 8 uses a wide range of structures flexibly. And therefore, it's interesting to listen to him because he can easily use the active voice, the passive voice. He can use adjectives and adverbs. He shows his professional English language skills and therefore he deserves a high band. Last but not least, this candidate produces a majority of error-free sentences with only very occasional non-systematic errors. So the idea is he uses a long and complex sentences and he makes very few mistakes. Alright, now let's focus on grammatical range and accuracy. Make sure to use complex grammar and a wide range of grammar to impress the examiner. So now let's compare and contrast basic grammar with complex grammar. Okay, so um, according to the first sentence, uh, we've got the internet is popular with many people these days. Here, the candidate is using the present simple, is popular, why? Because the keywords are these days. This grammar is very, very basic and therefore this candidate is unlikely to achieve a high bend in the grammar section. Let's analyze the second sentence. The internet has become increasingly popular over the past several decades. Here, the candidate is using the present perfect, uh, has become, so the formula is has plus past participle become, became, become and he wants to indicate that something has already happened and we've got the result and the keywords are over the past several decades so whenever you use this period, this long period make sure to use the present perfect so uh, if you just compare these two kinds of grammar, it's obvious that the candidate who uses the present perfect is likely to achieve a high bend in the grammar section than the candidate who simply uses just uh, the present simple. Now let's focus on the next example. So um, the first candidate says, it's good that people get lots of useful information on the internet, but this information can be unreliable. And the second candidate says, although acquiring information on the internet can be rewarding, the quality of it can be not as high as expected. So the first candidate uses two simple sentences. Uh, by contrast, the second candidate uses a long and complex sentence using a concessive conjunction ALTHOUGH. Uh, why? Because he wants to show 
two opposing ideas. Okay, so the first idea is positive, the second one is negative, and that's how you can also impress the examiner. Use two clauses, the first of which is positive, the second one is negative, and use the word although. All right, let's analyze the next example to understand how to use complex grammar. Uh, both of these candidates use the second conditional uh, in their response. However, the second candidate uses inversion. So let's just uh, analyze it in detail. So the first candidate says, if computer users watched more documentaries on the internet, they would expand their outlook. And the second candidate says, were computer users to watch more documentaries on the internet, they would be able to broaden their outlook. Also, the first candidate uses one more sentence okay, to show the result. He says, as a result, they would be more intelligent. However, the second candidate wants to impress the examiner and he uses the word thus in the same sentence plus verb ing, thus becoming more intelligent, thus increasing knowledge, and so forth. So the second candidate uses inversion plus a complex sentence by combining both of these ideas and he shows a clear cause and effect in his response and therefore the second candidate deserves a higher bend in the grammar section. Alright, now let's focus on other examples to understand how to use complex grammar. So the first candidate says, students submit their essays to their teachers and they write these essays very well. So both of the sentences are simple and they are not complex. Let's just look at the second uh, example here. So this candidate says, students submit well-written essays to their teachers. So this uh, candidate uses um, an adverb well plus uh, the past participle and he combines both of them by saying well written essays to whom to their teachers so this person shows a high uh, level of grammar and therefore he deserves a higher bend okay now let's uh, focus on the next example uh, the first candidate says if students have part-time jobs they can earn money then they can use this money to buy stationery and uniforms. The second candidate says, by having a part-time job, a student can purchase not only stationery, but also a uniform. So, uh, the second candidate uses this beautiful grammar by saying by plus verb ing. So when, when you're talking about um, a particular action, a method to achieve a particular goal, you can use the structure by having a part-time job, by reading a lot of books, one becomes highly intelligent, by socializing with people, one can develop one's communication skills, so by plus verb ing. Also, the second candidate uses a balancing conjunction by saying not only but also. Okay, now let's focus on the last example here. Okay, so the first candidate says if people don't smoke, they will have good physical and mental health. In order to impress the examiner, you could say by not smoking, people have the potential to stay fit both physically and mentally. 
Okay, so the second candidate says, by not smoking, by not abusing alcohol, by not using drugs, by not plus verb ing. Next, instead of saying can, the second candidate says, have the potential to. Next, instead of saying just and, it's better to, it's better to say both and, both physically and mentally. Okay, and instead of saying just health, it's better to say to stay fit. Next, or you could also say not smoking at all means that one can stay mentally as well as physically healthy. So not smoking, what is it? It's a gerund, not plus verb ing, not smoking, not uh, hanging out at night not being involved in any criminal activities, okay? So not plus verb ing, and then means that one, instead of saying you, a lot of candidates always say you, you, you. Don't use the word you, it's better to say the word one. One means a person, an individual, okay? So use one. Next, and it's better to say adverbs here instead of adjectives by saying one can stay mentally as well as physically healthy. Next, instead of saying just and, it's better to use this conjunction as well as because it sounds again more academic.